background real quick while I just go grab my food and, and stuff. I will be right back. Wake up, space time. Yeah, I know my music's louder than my voice right now. This is my AFK stuff. But we're going to space. Is it louder now? Hey, the Dell. Change the game. All right. Oh, I 
should tweet this out. Space shit again. Tweeting out. Suck us into a black hole. Papa Bear! Space shit, guys. Space shit. We doing it. We doing it. So. First and foremost. Since my VOD last night, and other people are having the same issues, um, they're not being saved. So I'm recording this again locally. So I'll upload this to Twitch, and I'll upload it to my YouTube page. That's where all my stuff is, guys. Um, and we'll just jump right into it. Um, so I did get the, the <laughs> come for the space day for the space. You guys are fucking awesome. I really, I just have no words. I have no goddamn words for you people. Everybody that's here and supporting me, even if this is your first time and you're still here and we're doing space stuff, good on you. I appreciate it. Seriously, you have no idea. All right, so the guy that um, I saw, the earth isn't flat. No, we've known that for a long time too. Confirmed, the earth is not flat. <laughs> Alba Centauri, hi buddy. Valerian's first time and Joe. Joe's new. Joe has you can you guys can everybody can see Joe by his special name tag. I might have damn it Joe. Joe has his own Yeah, there we go. All right guys. So, I actually was able to Oh my god. Okay, I did. I got I just got like a really good nerd joke. And that's I am speechless for so many reasons. That nerd joke though, goddamn. I'm going to share it with everybody. Do you have 11 protons because your sodium fine? I <clears throat> Inertia Alec, thank you so fucking much for everything that that donation was. Buzzing. I just got it. <laughs> You're sodium fine. You're so damn fine. 11 protons. Wow. Fucking wow. Amazing. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. That's, uh, all right. That, <laughs> that might be the best donation ever made by a human. Um, okay, guys. So hopefully this works how I intend it to work. Yeah, this is a can't be previewed. That's exactly how that's supposed to work right now. Let me see. That's right. That's a bad one. Okay, here we go. Meow, meow. Star stuff. I'm nitrogen fine. That doesn't work that way. Damn it. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. Thank you. 
Here we go. Look, guys. Here, I'll move me up. Now, I can't... I can't deliver this the way he did. But this is basically his speech on the guy that I saw at my astronomy thing the other night. Hi, I'm right here. So this is the doctor guy that I, I met with on, he was giving a lecture about Proxima Centauri, which is one of our closest stars. And we've recently found an exoplanet that we call Proxima B um, that's orbiting it. And we, we, we would consider the habitable region um, for, for this kind of star and for an Earth-like planet. Um, so he was giving a talk about Proxima Centauri, the star, and kind of just, I mean, he's, he's, he's a red dwarf guy, especially assigned to this kind of stuff. So really cool guy, awesome guy. Um, made me feel old because I realized that he is, um, where, 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 where do I, where do I go? Oh, 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 that's the buttons. Okay. So, and he even put his sources on this. This was a video and it's not going to render. Um, but it was basically showing how the surface of the sun is really active. This is a close-up of the surface of our star, the sun. Let me bring up chat over here, guys. You're going to see your guys' chat for a second. So I can read it while you guys are... She's ignoring the peanut gallery. No, I'm not. I brought it up over here. And look at I'm actually eating my pad thai, too. Was that a donation? What was the donation? Hmm? The amount? It, I, I don't have the amount shown. Sometimes I say the amount, sometimes I don't. I don't think that that matters. The joke was hilarious. Hey, Josh, how's it going? So this is the surface of the sun. And what he's showing here is basically how things work as far as the energy going up that's all i can say is i know he we don't know what's underneath the surface of the sun we can't study that um even looking through different wavelengths looks like of a close-up of your skin does it it kind of does actually huh but what's cool about this when he was showing this as a video um each of these little cells that you'd see um just these little like you know um mar like just e individual closed off regions you would see them move so you couldn't even keep your eye focused on one because they go away. Looks like corn. You guys, god damn it. Mm. And this is the new telescope that they're going to be building in Maui. I'm guessing it's on top of Haleakala with the other um, observatories. Hey, Marie. Yeah, what corn are you eating? That's a good question. But they're going to be building this, um, and 2020 it's going to be completed, and it's going to allow for more stellar observations. It's going to be fucking amazing. Um, and Haleakala has one of the biggest uh, solar observatories right now, From if I'm remembering this correctly. I think it's true, though. One of the biggest solar telescopes on the globe. Um, I've been up there. I've actually done star stuff up there a few times. Um, love it. Love Haleakala. It's great for observing. Um, you can actually see both hemispheres. Um, as you see down here, you're actually above the clouds. Um, so it's very cool. Um, do I know of layered close? Mm-mm. Okay, so this is a sunspot, and this is actually a sunspot, just one sunspot, and it compared to the size of Earth. Now, sunspots come in 11-year cycles. Um, we can, our sun, and, and this is in the words of um, Dr. Kowalski, is that, and, and honestly, I agree with him, and I'm so glad he actually said it this way. Um, but our sun is really boring. Our star that, that we orbit around is pretty boring. 
We, we can predict when, you know, these solar cycles come and go. There's a solar mini minimum, there's a solar maximum. So basically, we know that sunspots are going to kind of have a peak at certain times, and they have this 11-year cycle. So there's, you know, a certain time that the sun is riddled with sunspots. And then there's a time where it's not doing anything with sunspots, really. Um, it's really weird, um, but it's super cool, though, too. So sunspots are big, guys. Earth isn't even a dot next to something that size. Barely a pencil. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. this is just a sunspot, you know. He helps build telescopes. He was a professor at my school. Yeah, I don't know much about, like, um, telescope builders. but So, and and these things, um, sunspots, you, there's, there's two different things, and I'm going to show you guys a video. Actually, I should probably show you the video now while we're on the topic. Um, there's a difference between a solar flare and a coronal mass ejection. Um, solar flares are also something I'm going to show you here in a second. Um, and CMEs is what we call them. Th those, are, those are basically just the... Uh, how would I put it? I think the video puts it a lot better. Solar flares... Um, uh, the solar flares basically reach us quicker. I mean, you can you can experience whatever kind of energy a solar flare is going to put off within like eight minutes. Um, it's it travels at the speed of light, um, and it's a it emits a bunch of uh, X ray radiation, uh, gamma radiation, very 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 high charged, high energy stuff. Um, but CMEs are different. Those are the ones that take about a day. I think I told you guys they take about a day. To reach Earth, um, and sometimes they can happen at the, at the same time. Um, sometimes they don't happen at the same time, but they're different things. That's what's important to note. A solar flare is different than a coronal mass ejection. Sky news makes me get your sunglasses. Not yet. We're not. I'm going to show you guys some of that um, stuff. Uh, so, so yeah. Uh, when when either a solar flare or a coronal mass ejection um, gets hurled towards us. Solar flares, again, they're going to travel at the speed of light. Um, so they're going to be hitting us. The sun is eight light minutes away. So the light you're seeing from the sun is eight minutes old. That was light that the sun emitted eight minutes before you could see it. So it takes eight minutes for us to see light that the sun is sending our way. Um... And that's, that's pretty fast. That's traveling at 186,000 miles per second. Or if you need metric, that'd be 300,000 uh, kilometers per second. Gamma ray bursts. Well, so, so solar flares can have gamma radiation. I mean, you can have gamma rays sent your way from a solar flare. It's going to be those high energy photons. They're, they travel at the speed of light. They're massless particles. So they travel at the speed of light and they go towards Earth. And that's why they can arrive here in eight minutes, as opposed to a coronal mass ejection, which is basically like a gaseous uh, stuff. And it still is, it still behaves almost the same way when it, and it, when it comes into our atmosphere. Um, but Earth has a nice magnetosphere. And this is actually a great picture of it. He did a really good job with this. Uh, well, actually, Peter Reed did. Um, but it's, it's a good one. Test. There's sometimes there are tests. Sometimes Steam gift cards are handed out. So, so Earth has a, a great magnetic field. Um, and that's from basically our core. Is it, I've talked about it a few times, a churning dynamo core. And that produces a nice magnetosphere. We have a great atmosphere as well. And so when solar flares or CMEs try to get into our, our atmosphere, they're met with this barrier first to go through. So it's kind of like the bouncer at the front door of a club. Um, and, you know, if you're a wimp, you're not likely to get in. If you do have, if you're, if you're fucking huge and you can beat up the bouncer, then you might have a chance of getting in. And sometimes there are a few things that do get in, those pretty lights that you see. Those can be parts of um, solar flares getting into our atmosphere or coronal mass ejections. Um, so when you see those pretty aurora lights that glow, that's basically them entering our atmosphere and what our atmosphere does with that. 
I'm pretty confident. She doesn't give her words to the best students, though. Well, I can't have my regulars that are, like, knowledgeable about this shit taking away the Stephen gift cards. What about the radiation belt? The vent. The radiation belt? Um. So, we're obviously weaker at our south and north pole. Which makes sense, guys. Where do you go to see the fucking Aurora Borealis? Or the Southern Lights? Where do you go? Would you, would you experience them from here? In North America? Sometimes you can. But usually you have to be up in, in North America. Canada? They can see them. Because they're more on that. You know, you can see how the, the Earth is tilted at 23.5 degrees on its axis. So you can see where there's going to be weaknesses. And sometimes it does make it up here, where my mouse is. Um, but, you know, very rarely would, would something be able to come in through here and go straight to the equator. Yeah, Alaska, Iceland, YouTube. I go to YouTube, too. <laughs> That's where I go. Although, I'll tell you, I want to go to Iceland. Um that's kind of like my dream is to go and see the Iceland is so cool that they actually turn off um, the city lights when there's a really good Aurora storm coming in they actually turn off the lights so that people can see them like the city lights it goes out in certain patches they keep some stuff lit but um yeah I want to live in a place that does that shit that's like hey guys we're we're uh yeah I'm just gonna tell the government here we're gonna fucking turn off the lights so that I mean look at this shit this shit's cool I want a government that does that, please. Thank you. <laughs> that shit would be awesome. Um, so, yeah, they do that. And I, I want to do that. I want to do that. That's kind of like a, a dream of mine. What? Dude, that's... Like, I don't know why you would say that. Like, I'm just, you know, I'm going to give you a little bit of a break. Like, don't fucking come in with, like, even if that was a joke, like, I don't want any kind of racist shit in here, dude. I won't tolerate that at all. And that's not why they can fucking turn off the lights. Don't be fucking ignorant. Sorry, I just won't tolerate that. Um, sorry. <laughs> Anyways. Moving on. So these, these are those magnetic field lines that I was showing you guys. Is that some hot pad tie? No, fuck it, Murray, you know I'm a fucking wuss when it comes to being stuff that's hot. Joe Mama? Yeah, it's FaceTime, baby. It is, my love. But I actually got this, guys. Okay, so I'm going to have to talk to him. Me and Dr. Kowalski are going to have to talk about this uh, use of um, Comic Sans. Although that might work with the, the older population. They might not know that Comic Sans isn't great. Nordic twist. Hey. He called me fat. It's fine. Yeah, he just needs, he needs to go sit in a corner for a little bit. Damn. So it just sucks. It just sucks when people get like that. Anyhow, uh, magnetic fields, like I was telling you guys about, these are magnetic loops. And what they do, the sun has a ton of them. And, and they're, they seem to be associated with sunspots. Why these actually come about, why they rise up, this is what he was talking about um, in the lecture. They don't really know. Um, we're pretty clueless when it comes to stuff like this. Because we can't, we can't go deep into the sun and see what's actually happening underneath its surface. Um, other than knowing that a hydrogen to helium fusion process is occurring. There's nuclear fusion. Um, 
He's the devil's typeface. So, now these guys are super hot, though. Super, super, super hot. These, these, um, I can't do that Kelvin conversion off the top of my head. Um, I'm better with just going from straight Fahrenheit to Celsius. Um, Thelmal, do you want to do that, that Kelvin conversion? Because I know these guys are fucking hot. These guys are just pure fucking energy, especially what you can see here at the bottom, how they're more luminescent. Um, but they're, they're these magnetic loops that keep, they kind of twist and turn on the sun's surface. And then what happens over time is they get really tangled up and really twisted. I mean, they start twisting, like actually twisting. And then the point that they start untwisting is when that energy gets released. And it's crazy. The energy, 100 billion atomic bombs. 100 billion atomic bombs. Okay, give it to us in Fahrenheit for all the people then, Finger. Yeah, these guys are fucking crazy energy riddled. So, yeah, I was about to say that's actually backwards. Right. Right. Yeah, C's on, on the inside of the equation, not on the outside of the equal sign. Thelma. <laughs> Thelma. That isn't that hot, yeah. It's like, wait a second. So if we nuke the sun, it won't care? The sun is nuking us. Okay, well, let's not just fucking. Oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the. Own, I'll do my own conversion if you guys aren't gonna fucking help me out. Hold on. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thanks. Making a streamer do like a million things, right? Um, Yeah, wouldn't that be around like 18? I'm estimating because I'm using a calculator. 1,800,000 degrees. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so around 1,800,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So almost, almost. If we want to just round that, we could just say 2 million degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit doesn't really count when it's science. That's true. Metric is, I, I would be all about the metric, actually. I'd be totally fine with throwing out this whole fucking Fahrenheit, miles, bullshit. Um, Kelvin is, yeah, Kelvin's way better. Um, but a, a lot of people in my space streams don't know even who that's named after. So... That's okay. So we're going to do it both ways because if people can't do a conversion, that's fine. They don't need to. So 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 basically almost 2 million degrees Fahrenheit, guys. Um and Here you go. When these guys twist, the magnetic fields untwist, as you said, like, like I said, they twist up and then it's when they untwist they get a sudden release of energy, and that energy is about 100 billion atomic bombs. Right, so thank you, Alpha Centauri. I, I, I know that, but like, I just, you know, this is what, this is what I was talking about with my, um, a 
100% Joe, yes. It's difficult um, with space streams. I don't want to, if I start talking too much about things that are outside of the realm of just basic understanding and like learning about astronomy, I'm going to cut off a lot of the people that might be interested in learning about it. So I have to find like a happy medium. It's a very delicate balance. And in fact, that's what I was talking to Bill Mall about tonight. So I have to, I have to make sure that I'm not, I don't want to go over people's heads and I don't want them sitting there being like, oh, I feel fucking dumb in this stream. Like, I don't want people, anybody feeling dumb. Yeah, like, I don't want anybody feeling dumb. Like, I should know this stuff. And, like, absolutely not. Um, I wish more people did know it. Sure. Um, that's my fucking opinion, though. You know? Um, if you're willing to listen, I'm willing to talk to you. So, I, you know, that's just it. Like, I don't want to come in here and be like, hey, let's talk about fucking entanglement, guys. Let's talk about some quantum mechanics. We'll just lay down some fucking string theory. Um, you know, we'll just we'll just start talking about like multiverse, all the things that we we are theorizing and we don't know, and that's gonna go over real well for a lot of the people just walking in the goddamn door. If I if I didn't know anything about a subject and someone was throwing in some stuff like that, I'd probably about face and be like, yeah, I'm not gonna be here. I'm gonna be dumb. Easy. I'm not upset. I'm just wait. Trust me, I felt dumb as soon as I walked in. Yeah, we all start from and so it's 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 a it's a fine balance and I'm trying to learn it as a streamer how to talk about this in a very um easy <laughs> easy um like I'm trying to learn how to talk about this where I can include the people that are coming in at the I don't know much about astronomy at all to the people that do actually know about astronomy and that are willing to be here and kind of that's why we repeat a lot of the same material. Hey, Bucktooth. Pen Penquecito? Hi. I'm a string theory master. <laughs> Those things are all easy. Yeah, anybody that's here, like, nobody here is dumb. I would never say that. So, but it's, it is something that I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to find a balance with. Um, and that's why I appreciate everybody's feedback. Feedback is kind of what I usually rewatch my VODs when they're actually uploaded to, to Twitch. That's when they're actually put on the site and that's functional and working um, because I get to see the questions you guys are asking. And I do go back and I just watch the chat um, just to make sure that I'm I know I'm not great about answering everything all the time. So I do apologize for that. And I promise I'll get better, hopefully. But yeah, it's it's the feedback. And I want to know. Did something fly over somebody's head? It's okay. I can, I, I mean, there's no one, no one needs to be fucking embarrassed. So anyways, they actually have flare classifications. This, I did not know. See, I even learned shit. I learned a lot of shit. There's a lot of shit with astronomy. I don't know. A lot of shit with physics. Um, But flare classifications, guys, they have X, M, C, and B. I don't, I haven't actually gone to look at, at this. Um, What I did know is he threw in something. I wrote that down. I wrote that down, but I didn't say what it was. I don't know which one's the, and, and I probably will look into this myself if anybody else wants to look into it. More power to you, too. I don't know if X is considered a uh, higher strength. Um, I'm guessing so. I'm guessing the B would be the weaker ones. What do you guys think? I committed. Are we going to die? Yes. Garen fucking teed. At some point. So, so yeah, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, these are when they un untwist and you get just 100 billion atomic bombs launched at your face. But. Oh, yeah, this is basically showing them in a different um, wavelength of light. And you could just see the energy um, kind of radiate through them. Here's the sun in also a different wavelength. I think they, they can look at things in the extreme ultraviolet. And so you can see how the sun's behaving. Looking at the sun in different wavelengths is super cool. Good. 
And honestly, if you guys ever tell me, like, I didn't get that, tell me. Or else I'm never going to improve. So... Looking at lower temperatures, um, the lower temperatures are obviously going to be these darker regions. So those are the cooler temperatures, especially in this wavelength. I can already tell you that. The hotter temperatures are going to be more luminescent, more bright. A lot of astronomy does make kind of sense once you get the gist of it. Going to be immortal? You don't want to be immortal. That'd be fucking boring, wouldn't it? So these are what sunspots look like. And those, those magnetic field lines that you guys saw right here, we know that there's some kind of association with these guys. We're not quite sure why um, there's an association. There's a lot of mystery behind these guys, but these are cool. These are really, um, our sun is extremely active. Um, here's some resource stuff, guys. Again, I'm going to upload this. It doesn't look like Twitch is, is recording my VODs right now. So I will have this on my YouTube page. Um... And so this will be, I'm just going to leave it on this for a second so that everybody, you can create your own flare movie and maybe who knows, maybe I do that. That might be pretty cool. Um, there's a helioviewer.org. Maybe we could go take a look at that here in a second. See, like a lot of this stuff I've never done and it, actually this looks pretty fucking cool. I don't know. I know there's stuff where you can actually see the sun. Like, real time. Well, y'all can die if you want, but I'm joining the Intergalactic Super Matrix. That sounds fucking fancy. Can I join? That might have been a while ago. Okay, so sudden magnetic field snapping and untwisting, reconnection, releases energy and causes electrons. So now we're, we're talking about particles um, being sped up to nearly the speed of light. And like I said, this causes a solar flare. So these particles are traveling at the speed of light. Um, they're photons, they're high energy, they're gonna be in the X-ray, they're gonna be in the gamma ray. If you know the tattoo on my arm, they're gonna be up here. So the the lines are squished together, they're more compressed because there's more energy. Um and so those go towards Earth takes eight minutes because at the speed of light, and it is light, they're photons, it takes eight minutes for that to reach us, that energy to reach us. Um I don't even know what this is. Combine information at many wavelengths, get comprehend okay. Um, solar eruptions. Now, these are different. These are CMEs. CMEs are coronal mass ejections. Um, I think he said this thing would span about uh, 10,000 miles or tens of thousands of miles. I think you could fit um, a few, few Texases in this loop alone. I forget how many he said. Um, but yeah, this thing is big. Um, and this, this is what we would call a coronal mass ejection or a CME. These take about a day. What we get from these guys takes about a day to reach Earth because they're not traveling at the speed of light. SDC greater than intergalactic super matrix. matrix. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. So this... Um, you guys can see, obviously, at the bottom there, those brighter spots, again, are going to be more high energy. More more stuff's happening at the at the bottom down there. Um, this is how we observe the sun and how these CMEs are actually happening. Uh, what you see here in this red square, I don't know what this red square is. I have no fucking idea, and I'm not going to even act like I do. What I do know is they block out the sun. Uh, that dark circle in the middle here, right here. You basically have to put something over the sun to block its light so you can see what's happening around it and you can see right there all of this energy that's being just shot out
So, so th but this is also how we study a lot of other stars that we can study that are bright enough that allow us to do this. Unfortunately, with red dwarfs, this method would become pretty tricky because, as I'll show you in a little bit here, they're not very luminescent. So red dwarf stars are cooler stars. Um, and they do not shine as bright as, say, hotter stars. Any thoughts on the Earth being flat? Uh, yeah. I have a lot of thoughts on the Earth being flat. So, like I said, and like he said, I feel like, yeah, he did a really good job. And I don't know if I'm maybe a little bit biased because I'd make a presentation just like this in this order. Um, like I said before, hold on, I'm chewing on broccoli. My thoughts on the Earth being flat are good detectors for trolls in my space dreams. That's my thoughts. So, um, the Earth gets just pelted by these things, and our magnetosphere, which he has actually a nice little picture right there, protects us. But when you're seeing those lights, you're basically seeing what the what how the the Earth's magnetosphere is protecting us from that kind of radiation, that kind of energy that's trying to enter in. Unfortunately, guys, Mars doesn't have a crazy atmosphere. It doesn't, it, it doesn't have a lot of protection against this kind of stuff. Uh, fucking Mercury barely has any. Venus has a nice thick atmosphere. Um, so, oh wait, 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 what did he say? Okay, I'm laughing at that. Go ahead. Do what you will. So, um, so yeah. So those pretty lights, and what's cool about this, this guys, um, and when we study stars and when we study planets and things like that, we do, we analyze light. Um, and we analyze it under, uh, basically a microscope in a way, it's the way you can think of it. It's called spectroscopy. And it's analyzing light and seeing its chemical composition. And um, I've done some spectroscopy. It's actually super fucking cool. I really enjoyed it. Um, but certain certain chemicals, certain certain um, what's a way to say this? Um, certain elements glow a certain color. So, for instance, oxygen is green. And I don't know if you guys have ever been in an ER and you've ever been in a um hospital or anything like that and you've seen that a lot of the a lot of that stuff is actually the same like um oxygen buttons are usually green uh which is kind of funny i i've noticed that myself uh, but yeah oxygen is green uh red i believe is hydrogen um so so that's why you get these kind of colors and that's how we study stars and we can actually study where they're at in their life sometimes based upon the 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 elements um, from you know that they're the light that they're emitting things like that we can tell okay well this guy's 90% hydrogen he's you know 9.8% helium and that other 0.2 is heavier elements um, so it's cool studying light is really cool um, this is our son <laughs> Dr. Kowalski is going to be super proud to know that this is how I'm doing this this is our son guys I'm sure he, I'm, I'm pretty sure he had something way fancier to say about this picture than I do. That's energy? The earth's not fucking flat. Like, there are actual pictures of our... Like, seriously? That might actually be a retarded question. So, okay. Here. There would be no fucking shadows. Really. 
like you have to think about this. Well, there would be shadows, but not 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 like. Uh, hold on, let me think about how I can show this. I really need like a. Yeah, so shadows would behave completely different if the Earth was flat. And there's a there was an astronomer called Aristosthenes, and he's the one that discovered this way back in ancient Greece. And that's by looking at the sunlight in a well. And then he hired a runner to go and plot a certain time and the sun's shadow at a certain time. And he was up further up where he was, I forget, there was one in like Alexandria. My memory is fuzzy because this is something I learned in, in school. Um, but he basically had two different places where he observed the sun at the same time. He had some guy documenting it there. He had already calculated the math and it turned out to be absolutely right. The, the whole theory of the earth being flat. Um, I'm sorry, but there's so many trolls on Twitch. That's like, they even say that shit in just other chats. So I can't really blame Valerian for, for thinking that's just a troll technique, really. So, hey, bros. What do I think of terraforming? Um, I think it's going to take a lot longer. I think we definitely can do something like that. Absolutely. I think it's going to take a lot longer than what people are thinking. Not really. Not, not the scientists that are really serious about it. They fucking know how long that shit will take. Um, I think the general public is being misinformed a little bit, but they're not being misinformed by really reputable sources. That is something I will say. Misinformation, obviously, is coming from everywhere, right? Um, but people that are actually involved in, in, in the process of terraforming and know what it would take, um, I, would, I would hesitate to say that it'd be in our lifetime that we could ever do something like terraforming Mars. Um, now, again, beautiful thing about science, and I'm not really into that kind of stuff, but I do know, like, I've, I've listened to a few things, and, and credible people talk about it. So it's not impossible. It's not impossible. Absolutely not. It would just take a long time. Euclid literally trumped Aristosthenes with his definitive revelation of a 2D mathematical universe. I will never die. Okay, so here's actually what I was just talking about with the solar cycles, guys. Um, technological growth is exponential, though. It is, and that's super cool. But that's the thing also is we need more people. Um, there is a little bit of a gap that we have here. Um, and I'll tell you, I see it. Even in my own major. We don't have enough people going into it. We need more people going into it. Half of the reason I talk about this stuff and get people thinking. Like, we need more people. We need more people thinking of this kind of stuff. And I think we had a boom of it, especially in the 50s and 60s and 70s when we were getting really heavy into in space and stuff. Even though the space race was launched for purely political reasons, um, it was still something that was good overall. And um, yeah, technology is definitely advancing um, and that's super awesome, but we're gonna need people to continue that advancement. And I think actually gamers are fucking smart people overall. I gotta admit, that's why I hang out with them. That's why I, that's why I, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable streaming on Twitch is, yeah, you, you meet, you run in with the dumb internet troll every now and again, but I'll tell you, um, the variety of people that enter my community and talk to me and stuff, like I'm always just taken aback. I'm just, the questions that are asked, I'm like, damn, that's a good question. Like, um, overall, so if I can get people's gears turning, I'm smart. Actually, Marie, you are quite smart. You're actually what really smart. <clears throat> Jams a crayon up his nose. You're still smart. Although that's gonna be really uncomfortable for a while. And your snot might be really colorful. Would I be advancing the human race if I were to program a highly addictive video game? Well, that's the thing. So there's cool stuff about, um, sorry, we do detour every now and again. And I don't want people to feel like I have to just be regimented and be like, no, I can't talk about that. Um, yeah, actually, um, there's been studies done on gamers and stuff. There's, I think, I think again, I think overall, I don't think you'd be advancing the human race if it was highly addictive and you had a person that basically couldn't leave it. Anything with moderation is good, but I think gamers do have a skill. Um, 
over just people that don't play video games. I think they've I think they've actually ran a few studies on it. I don't know how great the studies are. I, I can't attest to that. But that people have better like reflexes, better last minute like responses and stuff. I'm a big proponent for the game industry, so <laughs> Um, but I'm fucking biased as shit, and in science, I gotta be careful with that. <laughs> I'm smart. Or are you from Bastion? No, but seriously, gamers are some of the... I don't know. If I would want people actually interested in this kind of stuff, it would be from that group. Because think about when you're playing video games, whether it be an FPS or an MMORPG. I mean, look at how much energy people can put into like an MMORPG and, 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 and min-maxing the fuck out of a certain character. While I might make fun of that every now and again, there is some, I, I do pay respect to that. Um, they do learn about some of the dynamics and this works with this and this doesn't work with this. Well, you can apply that across the board, um, that kind of critical thinking. Um, same thing with FPSs. Um, there's always kind of some, some thought going on there and, that, and, and, and some kind of what can I improve, what, can I, what, have, what have I learned. And I think there's a lot of things that are valuable in gaming as far as that goes. Okay, so anyways, this, guys, is how the sun works with its solar sunspot cycle with that text being cut off. I don't think it's his fault. I think it's my computer. I'm going to take the fall for that one. Figuring out puzzles? Exactly. I mean, bringing astronomy to Twitch wasn't really a bold move, I got to admit. You guys make this shit so much fun for me. I will totally be your astronomy bitch. I will. Problem solving is an important skill, and, and people do it all the time in video games. And that's just it. So I think, I think honestly, um, this is why I talk to you guys. You're constantly problem solving. Everybody in here. Um, so... Um, so yeah, we're currently approaching a minimum, so it means that we're going to have less solar, um, sun, uh, less sunspots activity. Um, what's cool about this is my grandpa um, did study this kind of stuff, and I've talked about this a few times. Um, my grandfather worked on studying the basically the Earth's ionosphere and how that was impacted and influenced by certain solar storms that would happen. Um, my grandpa didn't know that I was this interested in the stuff that he was talking about at the time that he was talking about it. Um, but he, he actually, there was, a, there was a certain time in the 50s called the International, Geo, International Geophysical Year. And what was super cool about that is that you basically had the sun having a complete hissy fit and teams across the world basically got together and collaborated, went and deployed specialists and scientists in almost nearly every kind of geophysical or um, even helioscience, stuff like that. Anything astronomy or geo-based, which would be Earth-based. And they deployed it all over the globe. So you had people from all different avenues of science studying what was happening to the Earth from technology. And in, in the 50s, we didn't have great technology. Um, but we did have technology. We had radios um, and TVs and stuff like that. Um, my grandfather actually went down to Antarctica in 1957, I believe, and he was there for a year, and, uh, yeah, really cool guy. I was named after him. I was born on his birthday, um, and so, so he, he basically studied the ionosphere in interference from the sun and with our radio communications, um, and he did this twice. He went to Antarctica twice. Um, then he went and he lived on a, on a really uh, small island called the Palmyra Atoll, which is 
pretty much just like, uh, God, maybe the size, not even, I'm trying to think, maybe the size of Chicago um, in the middle of the Pacific. And he lived there, population like two people. You can barely land a plane there. I mean, you can land a plane, but. Um, so he had some pretty cool stories. He's rescued a guy from a burning plane that came in for another mission to drop off some stuff. Um, also, he's seen guys go out in Antarctica and never come back to the base because um, they fell into a crevasse. <laughs> so shit was real back then. Science is pretty cool back then. Um, I know that sounds really bad, but yeah. So guys would like go on you know, their little things and walk away and go take measurements of something with a glacier and my grandpa would never see them again because <laughs> they fell in um i bet damn sasquatch got them yeah dude my grandpa was pretty hardcore though um so i asked him what was the coldest it got there when he was there and he said negative 80 degrees fahrenheit or we're yeti i think there's a fuck i think that's a yeti like the abominable snowman. So, very really cool guy. Um, actually, he ended up moving to Maui. I'm doing some research for um, the National National Bureau of Standards. It's not known as that today. I think it's now known as NIST. But he did a bunch of stuff um, with radio communications. and So, I, I got exposed to Maui at a very young age, and that was also where I got to see the stars a lot. Sky, this is grandpa. Yeah, he has a he has a ridge in in um, Antarctica named after him. Um, so yeah, real badass guy. I'm super proud to call him my uh, my grandfather. Um, and he has no idea that I'm this interested in this stuff. And I'm sure if he did, I'm sure he'd be proud. Um. Yeah, it's called Barnes Ridge in Antarctica. Yeah, here it is. I was named after my grandpa. Right here, Stephen S. Barnes. Scientific leader at Bird Station in 1958. So I think, yeah, he went in 58. That would be the International Geophysical Year. No, it was 57 to 58. So yeah, my grandpa has this place in Antarctica named after him. It's pretty fucking cool. Did I just say negative 80? Yeah, negative 80 degrees. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So these were the guys that went to Antarctica and set up shop and, you know, they flew in I mean, it's pretty hardcore conditions in the 50s. Um, his, I, I actually got to, when he, after he passed away, I got to put on his Antarctica jacket. Shit was so heavy, um, but super cool. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff here um, that he did and super cool guy, super cool guy. Definitely, definitely glad to have him. Sorry, that guy's just fucking annoying me. Um, okay, so anyways, um, right here, solar cycle, guys. So 2014, you can see on this right here um, that it is much more active. You guys can see that. Uh, there's obviously something going on here. It looks like a little bit of a solar flare. Um, looks like you've got some high-energy magnetic field lines. Um, over here you have some as well, not as prominent. Um, but you've got these sunspots right here. Um, Actually, these are these are the energy that are coming from the result of those sunspots being around. Sunspots are relatively cool. Um, but you'll see over here, last Wednesday, there's not many of this. This is less active, and that's because we're reaching that solar minimum. That's a don't turn off the car day. Negative 80. Well, I think he's not even factoring in wind chill. He might be, though. Shit was real rough, and it's the 50s. You know, so there's also limited stuff. So yeah, you guys can see when you've got a you've got a, a 2014. I think was quite active solar um, with the solar cycle, and then you've got here 
last Wednesday, not that active because we're reaching that solar minimum. But our sun's predictable. That's that's the point he's trying to make here. Um, and I saw that easily that he's just saying, like, our sun's pretty predictable. We we know a lot about our sun. There's some stuff we don't know about our sun, but we know a good amount. Here's the HR diagram. You guys have seen me smack this in everybody's face um, a few times. Um, so our sun on the HR diagram is here. It's a main sequence star. Um, every star that's along this line, that's a beautiful, beautifully placed line. Um, these are main sequence stars. And I'm actually going to be doing a stream, guys, more about stellar evolution. I know we've talked about it quite a bit, but I'm going to really start at the bare, bare, bare basics from molecular dust clouds forming stars to their death. So, and you guys, I've, I've, I've talked about this with you guys so many times, but for everybody that's not a regular, uh, well, a regular meaning not Joe, not Valerian, go Evs, you might, you might not know, but you might know, um, Steam gift card opportunity, real quick here, guys. What's the name of that line? What's the name of that line? that I just talked about. How dare you. Joe, I'll make you cookies. What's the name of the line that I was just talking about there that all those stars are on? God damn it, Joe! Jo Joe just ruined it. I'm going to take away my face now, Joe. Look at what you just did to the stream. I was just going to give out a Steam gift card. That's all I was going to do. Joe had to come in for. Yeah, Joe's going to have to get cookies. Hey, Penty, you're going to keep that racist shit out of here, yeah? Even joke-wise, I don't want to fucking in here. I hear, I, I hear that shit all day. I've been hearing a lot of it more in other streams, and I don't, I don't fucking want it in here. Mm -mm. Main sequence. Okay, I'm going to have to ask another question. Blame Joe. Joe just ruined Christmas, guys. Okay, bad Joe. He's still going to get cookies, probably. I know it's white, but that's not why they can turn off the lights, motherfucker. You get it? That's all I'm saying. End of discussion, dude. You want to fucking backtalk me? You're going to get the fuck out of here right now. Okay? And we understood? We're going to move on from this. All I'm saying, just say okay. That's all I need to hear you say. That's all I need to fucking hear you say right now. I hope to God that is your next fucking word you're typing out right now. Um, so. So. To be fair, the answer. I took it off. I took it off. I took it off. Like, super quick. Geo. Shh. Okay. Thanks, Anna. Beer dude. Hey. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll have another question. There's going to be another Steam gift card given away. I've got enough. People are donating enough that I can easily do that. Like, that's... God damn it. Geo Bear... No, you did not see it. Okay, we're going to erase that from your mind. You didn't see it. So what, here's what's really cool. Okay, so now we're getting into Proxima. Now he's starting to talk about Proxima Centauri, the red dwarf. Now if I go back here... <laughs> you can't send me cookies. I'm international. You wish you were international. <laughs> so so um our star yes this is the main sequence this is what geo bear didn't see guys the main sequence is it's really cool the way stars behave um the main sequence line is definitely really populated we can see um a lot of stars fall on that line so our sun happens to fall on that line and it's down here it's a yellow dwarf um so uh, it's a cooler star, obviously, than these ones up here. We talked about this last night. Um, but what's interesting is the hotter they are, we're also seeing a trend that the more luminescent they are. So these guys that are in the top left here, um, you guys aren't seeing this. You guys are absolutely not seeing this. The stars that are in the top left here, um, up in this area, sorry, it took me a second because I don't look at my fucking OBS. 
I just remembered that I didn't turn it. So bad sky, bad sky. We don't see the diagram. Hey, hey, you do now. Stream delay is a wonderful fucking thing. Embrace it. Love it. Stream delay is love. Stream delay is life. <laughs> um. So, so yeah. So the stars that are in the upper left, you guys can see the trend there. Uh, those blue and white stars are are, are more luminescent um, than the guys down on the very bottom there. Those red and yellow stars are not that luminescent. So our sun is, you know, about average in its luminosity. Yeah, it's right here in the middle. But all the stars down here, they're not very luminous. And what sucks about that is that's the majority of the stars that make up the universe. 75% uh, of the stars in the universe are red dwarfs, and they are these class M uh, stars. Um, they're cool, and you can't fucking see them. So when you look up at night and you're like, wow, there's so many stars, you're not even seeing half the fucking picture. In fact, you're, you're missing 75% of those stars that are not, you know, they're not appearing for you. And those are the 75% of the most common stars. That's, I'm not trying to do the math that way. Um, but actually, 75% are these red dwarfs. I smash dwarfs. Um, yeah. Damn, dude. Yeah. Um, once we break the speed of light, it's going to be so chill having low ping servers across the world. Fuck yeah. No, it's not the same troll, and that's what's sad about it. Um, Anyhow, so, um, so yeah, so we definitely see that, you know, more, more hot stars, the hotter the star, the brighter they are. That, that seems to be the trend. Now, we do have these ones down here, the white dwarfs, when our sun dies, and we'll have a stellar evolution um, theme. It, it will probably encapsulate many streams. We'll have to probably put it in a few because I'm going to have to talk about a lot of these. Um, you've got red dwarfs, you've got yellow dwarfs, you've got white dwarfs, which are actually down here. Those are actually just dead stars that are slowly dimming over time. So when our sun dies, it's going to become a white dwarf. And it's just basically going to go out like a, a flame um, when the candle burns low. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's like a candle, basically. So at some point, it's going to stop being so luminescent. He was a hobgoblin. I know. He was even an EQ dude. Like, that breaks my heart. I fucking hate that shit, dude. hate seeing people like that I've actually conversed with for a while just suddenly just go fucking retarded. So, um, yeah, that's, that's cool. That's the HR diagram. It's a very cool thing. We're going to, we're going to hit a lot. You guys are going to see a lot of this. In fact, in fact, I'm just throwing this out there. I might ask everybody at some point for a Steam gift card, and I might make that one really good for them to remember this little scale down here. Remember how classy Sky was when she remembered it? Oh boy, a fucking girl kissed me. That's how I remembered this down here. Oh boy, a fucking girl kissed me. I'll win it. Joe, you can't. Like, seriously, I, I, you can't do that. You can't. I want this for other people. No, Valerian, you can't either, okay? Does it happen slowly or quickly in relative terms? Um, the dimming, so the sun going out. So, actually, it, it's, it's pretty long. White dwarves. Um, I don't think we've actually really witnessed firsthand one just going out. I'm sure maybe we have. Maybe we have. I know we haven't seen any of these guys die down here. Are we going to get homework? I might be telling you guys to remember again down here is temperature. These 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 letters are indicative of temperature. <clears throat> so you know if there's a star out there that is, wait, 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 whoa, 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 wait, 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 we can, I can show you, I can show you, I can show you in the game. So, here, here, um, let me just pick a star. We'll pick this one. 
up here where my crosshairs are, it says B. B, spectrum type B. Wait, did I just click something else? Fuck my life. Holy shit. I don't even know what that's about. Tonight has been perfect. I've enjoyed it as much as us. Don't let the people in the dark pull you down. Be of light. Thank you for helping me get through. Get to a happy place. Wait, don't let the people in the dark pull you down. You have light on your arm after all. I do have light on my arm. That's. Uh, thank you for helping me get to a happy place. You're incredible. Keep it up. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that a lot. And I'm glad you're in a happy place. That makes me happy that you're happy. So, yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. Um, the spectrum type there. B. B. And let's just grab another star. We'll just, we'll just look at, we'll click on this, this orange looking one. I guarantee if you, if you remember those letters, oh boy, a fucking girl kissed me. Oh boy, we're reading from left to right in temperature. Hot is on the left, cool is on the right. Oh boy. So that was B. You got this star. It's a K. Oh boy, a girl, or oh boy, a fucking girl kissed me. So K. It's right for M. Probably a cooler star. So this is this is why when I go over here and I show you guys this again, we just looked at a, a spectrum type B, and we just looked at a spectrum type K. So here's B, right here. So now we know that the star is gonna be in between these temperatures for B classification. Can I change it to girl to guy? You can. You absolutely can. You can do whatever the fuck you want with space. Yeah, so the letters, as far as what they actually do stand for, I do not know. And that's, see, that's a fucking good question. Damn. I have to write that one down. I don't know what they stand for. I never thought to ask that. What is the spectral type? Like, why, why, is, why do we have those letters? Why do we have letters like that? I have no fucking idea. That's a fucking good question. Damn. Yeah, Dodgy, I think you win a Steam gift card just for that fucking question. Damn. I don't know. I don't have the answer for that. But you still can't win. No. Well, we'll do. I'll do another one too. I'll do another Steam gift card. But that that definitely that was a fucking good question. Holy shit. I don't know. Um, I'm sure there is a reason. I would hope so. I mean, that was, that's an odd arrangement. Um, so we saw one that was a B, right? We clicked on one that was a B, so we know that that star is hot as fuck. Um, and then we got a K. So we know that that star's, you know, a little bit below ours. I think our star is a G, if I remember correctly. Our, our sun is a G. Yeah, it is. Looks like it. But yeah, so a cooler star. Oh, he stumped me. Well, yeah, you can you can stump me. But that was a good question. That was fucking... So, Dodgy, will you do me a favor? Will you send me a whisper on Twitch with your email address? Um, anyhow. Hot, mildly warm. So, okay, so what's really cool about those stars, and that's what I was kind of going on um, earlier, is, is so 
so we know that Proxima Centauri, sorry, let me go back to this. Proxima Centauri is down here, guys. So it's a class M red dwarf. It's all the way down here at the bottom. So it's not luminous and it's not that fucking hot. That's what that's telling you. Remember this, this scale here, this up and down, that's luminosity. That's how bright something is. Um, so you wouldn't see this motherfucker with, with your naked eye. No. Um, and he's really cold. The first star. First star. First star. First star. I think he's about 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Surface temperature. Our sun is about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So first star, he's cold. Er. I guess I should say cooler. So cold's wrong. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> you guys are coming up with all the... Nice. God, that's great. <laughs> Joe. Oh, the creativity of my stream. So guys, um, Proxima Centauri. Dim, not very bright, and cool for a star. Um, taking that to here is a whole nother thing. It's bright in my face. Um, we do have a telescope that's that's um, we call it Swift. It's basically designed right now to be triggered by high energy stuff happening in, in interstellar space. Um, stuff that's usually in the um, gamma and X-ray stuff um, is, is what Swift is designed to be picking up. And that stuff can come from black holes, uh, pulsar stars, um, which are you know, uh, neutron stars like pulsars, magnetars, all of those kind of cool stars. Um, and what's funny about this is they were studying a certain star um, that had a, a solar flare eruption. And it was the same kind of star as, as Proxima Centauri. It was, a, it was an M dwarf star, red dwarf. And the solar flare uh, emitted so much X-ray radiation that it triggered this telescope that's not designed to go and look at another star, necessarily. Triggered it to basically go and look. So it kind of got picked up on its radar, and that was that was kind of cool. It wasn't supposed to do that, um, from what I understand. So, um, can somebody do a Kelvin conversion for me again? Three, 300 million Kelvin into Fahrenheit? All those classifications mean one thing, an incredible sunburn. Yeah, yeah. So and what's what's cool about this is this, there's a there's a telescope out there that is, um, that was directed towards looking at a red dwarf because of, of the solar flare that it had. 5.4 million. Yeah. So that's the that's the the temperature, the X-ray temperature, of a solar flare. Is what I'm seeing here. Um. So they called it a super flare because it it, it picked up it, it triggered a a piece of equipment that's designed to study high energy, um. But it wasn't going to be looking at a star, expecting a star to do this, uh, especially a red dwarf. If anything, I mean, maybe it may be a neutron star. Um, neutron stars definitely are are emitting high energy stuff all the time. But um, this red dwarf had a, a super flare, and uh, that's when we kind of, or I guess they kind of stepped back and said, okay, wait a second. We have our eye on this star that's also a red dwarf, same classification. If we see that that kind of capability comes from something that's identical to it, uh, we got to start thinking about this a little bit more. And is that actually happening with Proxima? Um, so flare decay is about two to three weeks. So this is what's cool about it is, and I told you guys this, that it increased that star's luminosity. So it's brightness that you would see with your eyeball by 200 times during this little solar flare that it had. Stellar classification. Wow. 
class O. But these are spectral types. Like, why do we have the name? Like, I know what stellar classification is. I'm just wondering why the fuck do we have these letters? Like, why do we have the spectral classes O through M? Like, what are these guys? I know what they mean. I know all of this stuff. I just don't know why they're named that. Right here under this but see they still don't tell you what those letters mean what do the letters mean oh under Oh, okay. It was spectroscopy. Okay. Okay, I could see that. I could see that. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that would be a spectroscopy. Okay. There's some spectroscopy right there, too. So that's what you actually can see with a spectroscope. Um, I've done some stuff like that. That stuff's really cool. I wish I would have got to do more of it. So our sun, right here. Uh, it is a G. It is a G. And you can see here, Arcturus is, um, I believe, cooler than our sun. But it's more luminous. But it's huge. That guy's huge. I believe. And let's not have that shown. Yeah, that might be my wallpaper. It's fucking awesome. Uh, let's see. Where did my thing go, though? Is it right here? No. Where did it go? Is it not even here? No, it's still right here. Did it, like, collapse on itself? Like a star? I don't see where it went. I think I crashed it. Here, let me bring it back up, guys. Okay, so I can't go to other fucking links, apparently. That's how the fuck that works. <gasps> Richard, hi! Please be my 250th follower on Twitch. That would be amazing. Well, I can't be your... If you wanted me to do it now, I won't be that. Um... This is a dope stream. I'm glad you're here. Super glad. So here. Hold on. Okay. So this is what we were on. Um, and so, yeah. So it, this the Swift telescope stuff was triggered um, in non-Twitch non terms. It wasn't supposed to be looking at this stuff, and it turned towards it because... Red dwarfs apparently have super flares, and they emit this crazy amount of X-ray radiation, and it's crazy because we never would have thought this. Um, and this is a problem. You probably don't want to be close to one of these guys when they have something like this, unless you have a sustainable atmosphere, um, or you know, a good magnetosphere and a good atmosphere. All of those things have to work in order to dodge that kind of radiation, you know, um, like this. Mm, 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 mm. Where was it? 
like this, you know. Um, however, the the problem with with red dwarfs, and I think we talked about it last night, is that in order to be in a habitable zone within them, since they are cooler stars than our own sun, and you know we're at the distance for our sun here. Now, if our sun was cooler, we would want to probably be closer in. You know, that's what we what we talked about. Actually, that's one of the Steam gift cards I was giving away last night. Is because I said if you're a red dwarf star, would you, you know, and or I'm sorry, if you were an Earth-like planet orbiting a red dwarf, would you want to be cool? Would you want to be closer or further away? And you want to be closer because again, it's it's a cooler star than our sun. So uh, Proxima Centauri or Proxima B is 0 0.05 AU, um, which is an astronomical unit. Um, it's the measurement of the distance from the sun to the earth. That's one AU. So this guy's 0 0.05 AUs. It's not 0 0.5. It's not a half of an AU. It's 0 0.05. So this guy's really fucking close. And I think we were talking about uh, how that means like it's just basically right in its face. So if this guy, if, 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 if these red dwarfs have these super tantrums like this, where they're they have super flares of x-ray radiation and you're that little earth-like planet right up in its face might not be a good place to be and so that's kind of making us rethink some things yeah it's five percent right wrecking stuff hey spaceanswers.com yeah, no, I actually had someone whisper it to me. I wish they would have... I want that posted publicly. No, there's there's a reason. It is it is based on spectroscopy. Now when I think of it that way, of actually analyzing light in that way. I don't know why I didn't think about that. I've only done spectroscopy a few times, though. Maybe like three or four. So not not nearly as much as I want to. So yeah, you don't want to be next, you don't want to be on an Earth-like planet, you know, uh, 20 times closer than the Earth is to the Sun. I mean, 20 times closer. Um, and that's what Proxima B is. It's 20 times closer than the Earth is to the Sun. And you don't want to, to be in that area um, if that shit was happening, unless you've got a crazy cool magnetosphere that can protect you from it, which I guarantee is probably not the case. And again, we don't know. Um, I think we're going to, I don't know how the hell they're going to do this. Um, I think there is a project coming up that I've actually heard about. Um, and you guys can Google it uh, or someone, if one of my mods can Google it, maybe like link it. Uh, it's the star shot program. It's one word. Um, and I think, uh, that's going to be something where they're looking at sending something to this star or to Proxima B. But they're, they're hoping to travel at a certain percentage of the speed of light. So, and I think Zuckerberg's actually behind it. I think, um, I think the, I think Dr. Kowalski was right when he said that Zuckerberg was behind it. I think he, he thought he was thinking too. And I was like, I think he is. Um, Anyways, okay, so here's some flares from indoor stars. Um, they can be uh, 100 to 10,000 times larger than uh, the ones on the sun. So, so we're seeing that this star, um, these, these red dwarves, their solar flare activity is insanely more active than our own star. Breakthrough initiatives. Sweet. Thank you. Is it? Is my okay? So my chat's working because you just talked. Okay. Um, blue light image, flaring. Let me look at this closer. I'm trying to remember what he did. You ban mostly NUV continuum emissions. Oh yeah. So this is this is not active versus active. So so we're seeing that that red dwarfs are more active with their solar flare activity than our own sun. That's that's essentially what's happening here. Um, actually, this is some of his research. 
this is pretty awesome. I could see his name down here at the bottom, and that's what's in telling me that. Um, this is some um, artist impression of what Proxima B would look like, the surface. It's an artist impression. Um, probably doesn't look like that, though. So we observe red dwarf stars flare similar, or for similar reasons that we observe them for planets. I don't remember what this was about. The near ultraviolet is a way that we observe certain stars in that wavelength. Um, we observe red dwarf stars. I'm trying to pull together what he was saying at this time. We observe red dwarf stars for flares for similar reasons we observe them for planets. I don't remember. So Proxima Centauri, this is the stats on it, basically. Um, it gives its size, how long it will live. Um, like I said, red dwarf stars are about 75% of the stars in the universe. He says that here, too, most stars in the universe um, right here. Um, he gives the spectral type. It's fully convective. I've talked about that, too. Um, in terms of it doing a constant uh, hydrogen into helium uh, nuclear fusion process. It's fully convective. Um, right now, Proxima Centauri, that star is about 6 billion years old, so it's older than our star. Our star is only 4.5 billion years old. Um, it's, it's solar day, I think, is 83 days. Is that right? No, I think one year is 11, or one year is 11 days. So I don't know what he's talking about with that. It might be actually, no, I think that's um, how long? No, 83 days? I don't know what the 83 days is. Because if that was talking about Proxima Centauri, or Proxima B, Proxima B goes around Oh, Proxima B goes around in 11 days. So maybe it's talking about how fast it spins the star itself. Is anybody here? Or am I talking to myself? Is my stream broken? I think he's talking about how the, the rate of a star. 83 days. For it to spin, though, it would be spinning slower. It would be spinning slower. I'm here. Oh, hi, guys. Okay, just listening. Okay, okay. Oh, my God. I didn't mean to call out my own, oh, my lurkers. I'm sorry. I love you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. You guys are adorable. I love your faces. Maybe. So, uh, yeah, I think he's, I think uh, it's going to spin. Uh, if it's older, it would spin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wouldn't it spin faster, though? But if it's an older star, it might be spinning slower. Because our, our sun is slowing down in its spin. I don't know if you guys know that. Um, but the sun is slowing down. Philmall, are you listening? Because actually, I wonder what you think about that. I wonder if it is 83 days it takes for it to spin. I mean, I guess that would make sense. Or someone could Google it if they wanted to. But it is six billion years old. It's got some age on our star, and I think that might cause it to spin slower than our star. Him, that guy. Hey, Zara. I can only hear sounds of static. Can anybody Google Proxima Centauri rotation in days? Those words, Proxima Centauri, rotation, days. Sounds like a rotation period. Yeah, I know. 83 days, dude. 83 days for it to rotate once. The sun is about 27 days, averaged. We talked about that last night, too, and I'm. It's, it, we'll talk about it again because that VOD is fucking non-existent. Um, that's an average because the sun actually rotates at different speeds on at its poles than at its equator. So the sun rotates differently, guys. If this is a pole and down here's a pole, here's a line that goes through it, it rotates differently up here and down here than it does in its middle section. I believe it actually rotates 
faster at the equator and then it'd be rotating slower at the poles. So I think it's about 25 days at the equator, roughly about 29 to 30 days at the poles. So the sun's not moving at one solid object. It's not like that. Patrick Gamer not doing much at, oh. But does the sun have an orbit? Um, well, the sun's moving and we're moving with the sun. Everything in space is, is pretty much moving. Um, so the sun does have an orbit on, 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 as a solar system, we have an orbit. Our solar system has its own orbit. How cool is that? So I'll show you guys that here on Space Engine in a second. That's the, I'll show you how that works. But yeah, so our sun is moving relative to everything else moving. Um, everything is in motion in the universe. Um, there's nothing that's really, even black holes are moving. So black holes actually move in space. Um, but you know, how something moves and how it behaves and you know and how you see that is relative from your perspective what we call a frame of reference so um yeah so yes so the sun is moving um it is it is it has its own orbit and it drags us along with it we we're kind of you know underneath that stars you know the star kind of has its influence jupiter and and the sun are are dominant parts of our solar system so uh, we're moving along with it. So it does have an orbit and in, you know, millions of years we'll have a different location on the Milky Way than we do now. Our night sky will look completely different um, due to that location. And that's why astrology, guys, that frou-frou bullshit stuff is completely irrelevant because stars are moving, we're moving, and those astrological charts change uh, on average about every 2,000 years. And when those were made, well, we haven't really adjusted them yet. So it's just a bunch of stupid stuff. Pizza, space. 82 days. Yeah, so 82.6. So yeah, he estimated. So yeah, so it takes Proxima Centauri to do one rotation, 83 Earth days. So one rotation. Our sun, roughly about 27 days. So our sun's moving faster than Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri is also older. And I would say that there is some kind of correlation there. There's some kind of, my brain wants to say that. Now I might be wrong. So it has a high flare rate though. Ruff roughly around two flares a fucking hour. That's insane. Hey. Pizza in space, the best thing ever. I agree, dude. No way. There's just no way. Pizza in space. All day, every day. So yeah, so um, this is the Milky Way, guys. Now again, we're limited to a portion of the Milky Way that we can see. Because, like I said, we have our own little address on the Milky Way. Um, and hold on, let me be super polite. Give me a second. You know, actually, I'm just gonna just gonna really just be really conservative about this for right now. Okay. All right. So, on the Milky Way, um, we have a uh, we're we're basically in between. Watch out, guys! I'm about to Bob Ross this. You ready? Now, this isn't really how our Milky Way looks, okay? But. If this is our Milky Way galaxy, this is the center of it. I'll say the center. I'll make the center huge. I'll just draw a big black thingy in the middle. So, if, if this is the center of our galaxy, down here, this is where our, our little solar system is. What we're going to be able to actually see in the night sky is going to be between here and here. We can't see anything over here. We can't see the stars that are over here. We're literally seeing only this little area. So, you guys like that? Happy little stars. Okay. 
So we, from our vantage point, we don't really see a lot. There's so much more that we don't see. Um, Proxima Centauri, he's showing you where it is located uh, relatively to other... That I think that's the Southern Cross right up here. We don't see that in our... Uh, um, North America, we don't see that. That's that's below the equator. Van Gogh-esque, I know. Planets around M dwarf stars. Um, this is how we detect exoplanets, guys, around these kind of stars. Cool shit, huh? Now we're getting real sciencey. But I mean, he's a doctor. He got his PhD. So how we detect that is actually the star. Um, we saw that the star um, wobbled. Proxima Centauri itself was being tugged on by the planets that orbit it. And we could see that. And we were able to obviously fucking graph that shit and just see how much it's being disturbed. So Earth mass, planet at 5%. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. 5% close. 5% um, the distance from the Earth to the sun. So 20 times closer than the Earth is to the sun. This also shows you how, wow. Um, he talks about the pale red dot. Um, that was a project to be looking at Proxima Centauri, um, or, the, or actually these red dwarf stars and, and finding exoplanets. They did it, obviously. So this shows you uh, Mercury's orbit. Mercury is really fucking close. Um, it takes, I think Mercury is about 80, 88 days to go around the sun. Um, and this guy takes 11 days. Severosa, I know. So Mercury takes 88 days to go around the sun. Proxima B, 11 days. But again, it can be that close in, in, in what we would think um, because this is a cooler star. It's not as hot as our sun. So you can have a star that, like that that has planets that are closer in and get the same conditions maybe, possibly, potentially, as Earth. Um, so, yeah. There's this Goldilocks zone. That hot green you guys are seeing, that's what we call the Goldilocks zone, meaning it, it's just right for habitable conditions. Does the speed of an orbit have an impact on the atmosphere? Um, no, not, I don't think so. Like a magnetosphere is going to be the speed of its rotation because a magnetosphere is generated from a, a dynamo core. So basically a, a, t a core that's moving actively geologically. Um, I don't think so. I'm not sure. That's another. Now you're just coming in with like fucking good questions, like left and right. Okay, so the irradiation from anything flare related from that star, from po Proxima Centauri, would be 400 times the strength than a flare or a coronal mass ejection. Now those two things are different and I'm gonna show you a video on how those two things are different. I'm not describing it as well as I'd like to, but we'll talk about that. I will show you guys a cool little video on, on how those two things are different because it'll make more sense. But y you guys can start throwing around that word now. Like just, you know, honestly, if any of you guys are single and no, that, sorry, it only work with me. Never mind. I was gonna be like, you could just start throwing around some really fancy terminology and just impress the shit out of girls. Just be like, yeah, coronal mass ejection. That might be, that might sound intrusive. Never mind, don't do that. Because if she's really not that smart or doesn't know anything about astronomy at all, which doesn't necessarily, it's not indicative of IQ, but two aren't related. She might think you're talking about something totally different. So never mind. 
don't write that note down. Okay. Don't write the don't write that down. I'm sure she'll think you're talking about something serious. It might sound like a medical condition, actually, now that I'm thinking about that. Coronal mass erection, absolutely. That sounds like something very serious that you might want to call your primary doctor about. So, <laughs> sorry. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry ever. Hey, <laughs> hey Sky, you want some of this coronal mass ejection? Yeah, I'd probably start screaming help and running away. <laughs> If I didn't know anything about astronomy, oh my god, now I'm going to start crying. I'm laughing from that. Yes. Just, just discard that. That was bad advice. So, yeah. You might want to call your primary doctor. That's all I'm going to say. So, again, how we detect these coronal mass ejections is by blocking the sun. We basically cover up the sun when we're looking at it and we're observing it. We cover it up so we can see all of the activity that's going around it. And you can see there's obviously a lot of CMEs going on. Uh, it's just shooting a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Sky trying to make us die alone. I don't want to share you guys. <laughs> I'm a little bit I'm a little bit possessive about the people that are regular is in my stream sorry and protective and possessive all of those words you guys are making me laugh you're hearing huge static spikes i'm not hearing it is anybody else hearing it Short bursts? Is this astronomy or biology? I might be, sometimes my, my the, the P word, like P's are hard unless I use my pop screen. That might be it. See if I go pop. Like that's, that's why we have pop screens. <laughs> this guy got a girlfriend. Not on my watch. You're having chirps again? Am I? Really? Here, hold on. Can you guys hear me now? Chirps sound like good descriptions of what I'm getting. I'm wondering what that is. Maybe it's my gains up too high? You guys can't hear me? Yes, but I didn't hear chirps either. Okay. Oh yeah. I'll no, I'll I'll be able to I'll watch my VOD and listen for it. What are we listening for? Nothing important. <laughs> ozone depletion. You guys have heard me talk about ozone depletion. You've talked I've talked about Mars. I've talked about how Mars basically has really little to no atmosphere. I mean it has an atmosphere. It does. But a lot of that atmosphere has been stripped away over time. It's losing its atmosphere. Um, and that's a problem, especially when you're dealing with radiation coming from a star. You want an atmosphere. You want a magnetosphere. You want all those fun things. <laughs> God damn you, Murray. <clears throat> the music was cutting out. Was it? It should be there now. So, so ozone depletion happens, um, and it comes from stellar radiation. That will strip away an atmosphere over time if it's weak enough. Um, it will do that. I mean, everything is kind of already being exposed to that. Um, so 
So that's why I have a problem with a little bit with Mars just right now. But again, you know, I, I know that there's probably a lot of science that's been. How do you feel about Matt Damon growing space potatoes on Mars? Actually, that movie, uh, the book is really good. Um, that movie got a lot of its a lot of it right. The thing that it didn't get right uh, with the movie um, was the the wind on Mars. That's what they didn't get right. But other than that, they did they they had really good physics in that movie. What are you doing? What is this? Space matters. That's it. That's all I got. I got space matters and with a donation. Thank you so much for that donation. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. I gotta read the book. Oh, it's 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 a great book. Um, but they did they did science that very very well. I'll say that. The the wind was the the, the problem. Thank you so much for that. Space matters. Space shit matters. Absolutely. You hate not seeing donations? What? Like the amount? I don't think the amount matters. You can see the little donation thing come up. I just don't think the... I can hear the... Oh, or are you talking about the get? Like the image? The matter... The... Like the price is right? Well, you can sit there and play that game and guess it. So, um, so yes. Uh, this is dealing more with uh, protons and stuff like that, so it gets a little bit more fancy in the science realm, but what... Dodgy, in with the donation, says thank you so much for taking time to ta to teach us about space shit. You're doing great. Thanks again. Always. This is, this is, you guys make this amazing. I appreciate it. A lot. I like talking to you guys about it. I'll talk your ears off about it. As long as you listen. I'm a little bit protected too, so nobody else can date anybody. Get it? Get it? Get it? Or else... I'll tell you guys all the bad advice to go up to a woman and say, I've got a coronal mass erection. It's done. I'll give you all that kind of advice. Thank you so much for that donation and thank you for being here. Oh. Oh, I could do a heart like that too. See? Hold on. I'm super proud of it. I'm super proud of that. Eh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So yeah, so we like we like to have an atmosphere. We like to have an ozone that protects us from solar radiation. That's that's what this is saying. So we're a little bit worried with its proximity, and with the fact that we now know that these these red dwarfs are are pretty fucking crazy in their solar flare activity. That's a cool heart too. She flumbles. Hi. Hi, love. How you doing? Starshot program, really cool image that makes it look super, super awesome. But it's cool for several reasons. Maybe it will actually work. Maybe we can do something like that. Guys, look that shit up and read about it or whatever. I think they're trying to send something at, I don't know if it's 10% the speed of light or if it's 40% the speed of light. I don't know what they're trying to do. What I do know is they're trying to use lasers, um, which I think scientifically probably could work. I don't know too much about that kind of stuff. Um, that gets more into way, way stuff that I don't even know about. What I do know about lasers is that we've detected um, last year through LIGO, um, we detected two uh, black holes colliding. And that collision basically sent a ripple out into space time. So the fabric of the universe is what we call that. It's space time. It's a flexi material that um, Einstein came up with it and math works um, and it, 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 it 
if you think of space as like a goddamn trampoline um, or a pond, if you get something that's heavy enough, it will make a dent in that trampoline. Um, and that's how our solar system orbits the sun, is because the sun is massive enough to make an impression in the fabric of space-time. So like a trampoline, it'd be that kid that would be way too big, but would be sitting in the middle of a trampoline. And uh, so we've seen this, we've, we've observed it through lasers, using lasers. Um, so two massive, or yeah, two massive black holes colliding. And that collision was so energetic and so insanely packed with just energy, it sent a ripple out into space time, just like if you threw a, a rock into a pond. And those ripples go out. It took a long time to get to us, but we detected it, and we detected it through lasers. And Einstein's the one that gave us the math to be able to make lasers. He gave us two coefficients that we needed in our math. So, really cool guy, Einstein. Um, summary. Flares on the sun are very complex. I like how he put that first. That was awesome. Um, yeah, we probably get along. Uh, flares from other stars can be hundred, hundreds to a thousand times larger. So we've learned that than our own star. Proxima Centauri is the nearest star to us besides the sun. And it is the flare star. A uh, habitable zone for Earth-like planets lies very close to these kind of stars. So, like I said, you know, 0.055%. Uh, so, 20 times closer than the Earth is to the Sun. And, therefore, also to the flares. That's a big point he's making there because that might not mean it's so habitable. We're not 100% sure. But I, if I, were to th if I were to guess in my brain, I would say it's just a desert. I'd just say that it's been stripped of its atmosphere. Proxima B is just a desert wasteland. There's a loud click. That time I heard it. Fuck. Really? I don't know what it would be. I could have I could have a hardware issue. Oh, I might have hit this. Like that? I might have hit something. I'm not hearing it. Shit. Well, that's concerning. Okay, so. Maybe I'll just move it away. I don't know what's causing it now. In another stream? No, way louder. I don't know what's causing that. It's not a driver issue. With this driver. The other one was a piece of shit driver. And it wasn't the pen. It's not a big deal. If it's hurting people's ears, it's a big deal. Could be a twitch encoding thing. Could be. I've only been live for, oh, that's when I restarted. Okay, yeah. Um. Or something isn't plugged in all the way? No, everything's plugged in all the way. All of the stuff is plugged in. Mm-hmm. Yep, all cables are firmly connected. Because that was the first thing I thought of, too. My stream is all good. Sorry for the people's ears that I just abused with... I don't, or I don't know if I need to be apologizing... Remember the time. Okay. Yeah, because I haven't had any issues with this as far as Omega's here. Hi. Phantom power noise nonsense? I don't know. I mean, w it was it happening the other night before? I have a feeling that maybe Twitch might be having a little bit of issues. I mean, they're not even really saving VODs right now. I mean, I'm having to record this shit locally. Like spirits trapped in the cables. Okay, so that's the end of it. Um, for this guy. Uh, 
um... And hi, Omega. Are you gonna watch the SpaceX launch in 6.5 hours? Probably not. Um, I usually don't watch those things live. I do watch the reports that come on them, though. I watch those later. I'm, I'm usually checking my Twitter feed. How are you doing? That was me. So, I wanted to show you guys this, though. Why, what? Elon, Elon Musk is probably such a dick. Why do you think that? Isn't there a live feed you can watch? You know, honestly, like like launches, I don't really watch. It's not the same exciting thing for me as it is like watching a um, going by a planet for the first time. You know, that was a little bit different. Oh my god, I hope I don't have a hardware issue. Um, now that's what's taken over my brain. Okay, so. Here we go. This is the difference between a coronal mass ejection and a solar flare. I'm not having oh let me let me move my face. Let me restart it too. So it kind of it moves a little bit too fast for my liking. So CMEs and solar flares are both explosions that occur on the sun. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Like I said, sometimes they actually happen at the same time, but they're not the same thing. So like I said, with, uh, with Proxima Centauri, we've observed their flares. So the solar flares. And like I said, they're also high energy, um, so X-ray energy. And CMEs are not the same thing. And like I said, if it's X-ray radiation, um, if it's X-ray, it's, it's going to be a photon. It's going to be located on the electromagnetic spectrum, which is tattooed on my arm. Um, and so it's going to travel at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. Uh, so these things reach us in eight minutes. That would make sense because that's how fast light travels from the sun to us. Eight light minutes. And it travels in all directions. So this would be solar flare activity. So here's the difference. CMEs are giant clouds of particles hurled out into space. So now you guys know the distinction between the two. One is actual light, um, X-ray light. This one is giant clouds of particles that are just sent out into space. So this would be a CME. And you can see that they come from, you know, one source. Yeah, one to three days. 
so these are these are CMEs. You can observe them. Um, like the, that would be coronal mass ejections. We've seen those with the sun. And you see here, they blocked out the sun again. So we do that a lot. When we're looking at the sun and we want to study what the fuck it's actually doing, we have to block it out because it's so goddamn bright. Um, and this makes it possible for us to observe that. What is it saying? Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow it down. NASA's, okay, so one to three days, we saw that. I haven't watched this video, so I just, I'm, I'm watching it for the first time. Eight minutes, yeah. So solar flares will only take eight minutes um, because they're, they're photons. They're x-ray, they're just in the x-ray wavelength. So high, high energy, high energy photons. So they're, they're just light, but it's, 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 it's high energy light. Um, UV is also light, ultraviolet, and that's why we put sunscreen on our skin. Uh, to protect us against that light. Um, and so, yeah, so eight minutes makes sense because the sun is eight minutes light. It's eight light minutes away. So the, the light you're seeing from the sun is eight minutes old. So it makes sense that anything that gets sent traveling at the speed of light towards us would take eight minutes. Is that real time? It is real time. So the light that you're seeing from the sun is not real time. Uh, a lot of people... Um, uh, a chirp again? God damn it. Really? Man, I don't know. I don't know. I'm wondering if it's actually... Let me try putting my pop screen in front and see if that does anything. Sound like a keyboard getting hit to you. Those sun videos were they real time? I, they're sped up. They're sped up. Um, flare activity is not not um, that active, and, and and so yeah, they sped that up. They definitely sped that up. Um, we observe the sun, and you know we have things that are turned to, towards it, but we watch it. And uh, you know, like you can see, I'm sure something like that might have been something elapsed over a two hour period or something. But yeah, no, that wouldn't be real time. But yeah, I'm sorry. So there's a few things getting confused. So the video, yeah, not real time. It's sped up. Um, th those are observations from the sun. Um, sped up. And yeah, so the light from the sun that we see when you look up at the sky during the day, which you don't want to look at the sun, but that that's eight minute old light. So the sun sent that out um, eight minutes ago. Yeah, so flares only take eight minutes because they're photons. Um, what did it just say there? Jesus Christ. NASA ob observatory see flares as flashes of light, which makes sense because they're traveling at the speed of light. And CMEs as eruptions because CMEs aren't traveling at the speed of light. Um, they're traveling slower. They're not light. Coronal mass ejections aren't light, so they're not going to be traveling at 186,000 miles per second. They're going to take longer, and that's why they take about one to three days. More often than not, one day to reach us. Yeah, that's sped up. This is most definitely sped up. Yeah, so there there you go. There's a coronal mass ejection. That, that, that shit's big, um, and that's a lot of energy. Um... That's cool stuff. So this is this is how our sun looks, and this is how. Hey, Sky. Hey, Alpi. Did I make this presentation or just explain it? This is actually on the uh, space.com website, and the presentation before I did not make that is um, Dr. Adam Kowalski. He's uh, an assistant professor here at uh, CU Boulder. Um, and I'll, I'll go ahead when I upload this to YouTube I will put some of his information like uh, the link to his stuff 
um, because he's the one that made that presentation and he was kind enough to give me permission to share it with you guys. He actually said I could share it with you guys, so. Uh, yeah, but let's just say really bad. Let's say that you ate like really bad food. Because you really wouldn't want to be near that. Um, but that stuff gets sent out to us. It takes about one to three days for that stuff to reach us. And that's when we get those pretty lights. So this is our sun. Um, so look at how active it all is. All these things. These flashes. If you see something flashing super fast um, these are usually flares this is also a flare these areas down here are super super hot so much energy comes from these and there's a coronal mass ejection I wish I could slow this down like that I mean look at that <laughs> it's pretty cool so you have also this is showing you uh, you have actual solar flare and a coronal mass ejection happening at the same time so they don't always happen together get on odd shots level that's what I'm saying I know that they probably have a we can we can actually google one of these guys um, after this so I can show you a slowed down but look at that you know our son's just doing this constantly so here's a CME and flares as you see is just these little bursts of light so they're showing you the difference you guys can see that um, with the text that's on the bottom well, I'll rewind it again real quick here so they're saying that's a flare here's a CME flare you can see that by the just the the just flashes of light. That's both of them. And see, what you're seeing, guys, and this is what's really cool about light, the reason we can actually study these things and see them is we're seeing a lot of these in different wavelengths. So we have filters. We have filters that will show us, you know, um, something is low frequency as radio wavelengths. And we, we, can, we can have a radio filter.